Hi, my name is Sam Johnson and I am a voice teacher. I'm going to be reacting to and analyzing this compilation of strain versus support in American Western male vocalists. <laughs> Tongue, jaw, throat, and glottal forms of tension exist, while strain occurs from too much tension and improper larynx positioning. Strain, strain, yeah, I mean, if you have too much tension, <clears throat> then you'll start seeing some strain. And if your larynx is a little bit high, if you, if as you go to high notes, your larynx has to rise, that's probably not the greatest thing. There are times where it needs to rise a little bit, but generally people teach to let it be really neutral, sometimes a little bit lower, but usually just pretty neutral and able to move around a little bit. So if it's going up a lot, yeah, that's a form of your, your swallowing muscles getting involved and then feeling like they need to help with singing and they don't need to help with singing. So if you're able to strip away those extrinsic muscles, like your swallowing muscles, then you're able to sing a little bit healthier without that strain. <laughs> Maybe he does. Maybe he does raise his larynx a little bit. Um, I I don't think that he needs to sing bigger than he does most of the time, though. A lot of the time when he sings, he has pretty shallow vowels, pretty small vowels, but they they don't need to be super, super big. And just because you have a shallow vowel doesn't mean that your larynx is going to start rising, or it doesn't mean that you're going to start over compressing somewhere else. A shallow vowel just makes you sound a little bit shallower. <laughs> This is aided by muscles like the abdominals and back muscles. This air then travels upward to produce a sound. Wait, did they say that support is... Okay, but are, are they talking about while exhaling or inhaling? That's where I'm not completely sure. Because when you're inhaling, it's usually good to just kind of release all of these muscles so that you don't slow the inhale. So if you're, if you're like flexing while you're inhaling for singing, that's not going to be very great. If you start flexing when you're going out, that's also not going to be very great. The support happens from just a little bit of engagement. Just It's like if you're blowing through a straw just a little bit and you, you slightly feel it in your stomach, but it's not pushing. It's just there's a little bit of a downward motion. And to me, that's support. That's a podjo. It's this little feeling of sit down rather than flexing to make anything happen. So I honestly doubt that most of the singers that they're going to say are consciously flexing their back or their abs or their obliques. I doubt that that's a thing that they're doing. If they are, usually that results in a more tense or strained sound. There is still light that shines on me. Okay, so the first one with Bieber, he had a little bit shallower of a vowel. I don't know if it, I would say that was like super strained. I don't think that he needed to change his support very much though. I, I don't think that it was an issue of how much air is getting through or the resistance to his vocal cords. I think that the problem with that was he was just a little bit tense up like this. You can support the way that most people use that word and you can also strain. It's not like you can, if you're supporting, you're never gonna strain. That's not true. There are different ways for you to start squeezing weird muscles and making things harder on yourself. It was kind of pushing. He didn't push into it, yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, most of these, like, I wouldn't say that the difference is support. I would say that it's mostly a more open vowel. And if you're pushing into a really closed vowel, you're going to have a hard time. If you then open that vowel a little bit, if you go from, oh, it automatically takes away some of that compression. But you also don't want to over open. So it's just finding this place that's right in the middle where you're you're opened enough that you don't feel this compression, but you're not just yelling into it and pushing into it. Seth did a really good job with that of where he didn't push into it. He found a nice open vowel and then he just let it live. He let it be a really easy vowel on the top. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit closed. Again, if he just opened it a little bit. So I, I don't think it's support. I think it's just the, uh, 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 it's just dropping the jaw slightly. But for his style, he kind of wants to sound like he's straining or like he's just on the edge of things a lot of the time. I don't think that it's a problem with him because it's controlled. He's not like going there exclusively. He does have times where he doesn't sing with as much tension in his voice and I think that he's doing it just for an effect rather than just because he has to. Because all that it would take would be opening the mouth a little bit or backing off on the pressure. That was nice. Just really open. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, I wouldn't label these support. I kind of don't love saying support versus strain because again, I don't believe that they are mutually exclusive, that you can only have one. I think that you can have both and it's just the levels of support that you have because I look at support like it's the relationship between air and muscle. And if the relationship between air and muscle is really good, then it creates a really nice healthy buzz that can then go get amplified in your mouth and in all of this, in your throat, uh, with your formants, through your vowels. I think that the difference between these guys isn't really that some of them aren't supporting because it doesn't matter how much you change this if you're this tight. I mean, you can, you can change it a little bit and if you, if you change, if you change your support, it's, it's actually kind of less though because they're just pushing a little bit too much. And often when people try to add in more support, they just end up pushing a little bit more air or something or holding or trying to sing from their diaphragm, which in turn just makes you flex all of these muscles in your abs. So it, I don't know, I, I, I kind of agree because these people who they've labeled support, they're definitely singing easier, but it's, it's actually less trying. It's not bearing down as much. It's less apodjo and it's just open vowels rather than pushing into really small vowels. Give me love. That sounded pretty easy though. That one didn't bother me very much. I, I really like how small it is. It's thin and because he has that thinness to his voice, he's able to add a little bit of compression just to get the sound that he wants. And it actually helps him go up higher using this kind of sound. Again though, if he just opened up the vowel a little bit, he'd be able to maintain that same thing and have it be a more open sound. I don't think that he wants it though. And a lot of times in pop music, singers and artists will ask for it to be not a super open sound and it's just, an accepted style of the genre. That was great. Yeah, less pressure, not pushing into it. Oh no, that sounded pretty good. That sounded pretty easy. Definitely more open sound. So as you see, it's definitely a spectrum. There's not just you're supporting or you're not supporting. You're supporting or you're straining. That's not the case. Because you see with some of these people, it's it's like right in the middle. And I guess you could, it's good to get picky and it's good to be like, oh, is this hard? And if it's hard, figure out why. Usually it is because either someone's pushing into it a little too much or because the vowel is wrong. And that's totally true. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
But with that, I would still say there was a little bit of extra pressure. There was a little bit of strain and he was supporting super well. He had a pretty good relationship between Aaron Muscle, but it was still like on this edge where it's kind of straining. It was really, really heavy. And I think that if he just backed off on that, it would turn out a little bit better. Does it mean that he wasn't supporting? No. That sounds easy. That sounded easy. It sounded like there was some post-processing. You hear the notes, they don't slide. There's always like little intervals between them. And I don't think that he's trying to do that with runs. It sounds like auto-tune was in and it has just made some of these notes appear. Uh, I, I think that he can sing well without it and his vowel actually sounded pretty good. So I think that if you took that auto-tune off, he would still have a really quite nice sound. At the same time, if you took that auto-tune off, it would open up the harmonics on top of it and it would end up being a more open sound. So with that, I don't think it's really fair because they are going off of like whether it sounds bigger, whether it sounds a little bit more open, or if it's a tighter sound. And tight's not always bad. And you can see that with that last one where he, it actually was pretty easy, I think, for him. But because of the post-processing, it sounds a little bit thinner than I think it actually was. <laughs> Really, uh, it's not like he's opening his mouth like crazy though. He's not going, ah, on that G. It's just a little bit open, uh, just enough that he can get this kind of tone. And then it's a teeny, teeny amount of air going through with really healthy vocal cord closure. So it's a really nice buzz coming from his vocal folds. And then it's going into this really easy looking vowel. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really good singing. Oh. that he was just starting to push a little bit early. So before he even got to the high note, he was already leaning into it and a little bit unbalanced. And so when he got up to the G sharp, it was a little bit pushed and he had to open his mouth in order to match that sort of energy that was coming from below. I see yeah, that's nice. And Jeremy loves these like kind of tight vowels. And everything else is so good. It's just like if he went from eh, if he just relaxed his face a little bit and everything from here up, if that just relaxed a little bit, I think it would be a more open and slightly easier sound. And Jeremy's one of my favorite singers. I think he's so expressive. I think he's a brilliant vocalist. But there are times where he gets a little bit more pushy or a little bit more closed off. And so if you're work if I was working with him, to make sure that he was able to sustain through a tour or something. That's the first thing I'd look at, is just making sure that his vowels are a little bit less tight. Honestly, a lot of times audiences love it when you're a little bit on the edge, when it sounds like this is hard for you and you're just like pressing into it. People really dig that sound and not every time is appropriate for it to be this very open, very clear, beautiful sound. So I think it's important to be able to recognize when these singers are doing these effects as a choice and when they're straining just because they don't have any other options. And it's okay to enjoy either of them. I mean, both of them are just different tones that you can use to tell a story. I think that in this video, we saw that like you can sing it both of these ways and still have it be an appealing product. Whether it's the ultimate product, I don't know, but that's where it's up to the artist to decide how they're telling the story rather than just singing one way because that's the only way that they know how. But again, the difference, the biggest difference with most of these people is either that they're pushing a little too hard from down here, which happens a lot of times if you're focusing too much on support and trying to make sure that you're tensing just enough so that you can let enough air through and all of those extra little things of trying to control how much air is coming out rather than just letting it be a small little regulator. All of those things add up and it creates a strained sound. The thing that I'm worried about by doing a strain versus support video is that people just become automatically more concerned with like flexing all of this when they're singing and that shouldn't be it. I mean, you can see in the people who sing super well where it's labeled support, 
they they look really relaxed and they're not thinking about pushing down or doing very much stuff. It's just letting a little bit of air through, a little bit of a buzz, and then finding a good vowel. That's a pretty big difference from like really trying to lean in or make support a big deal. If support is a big deal for you, if it's really hard and you're struggling, relax. See if relaxing can make it a much easier experience for you because singing shouldn't be hard. Singing shouldn't have all of this strain all the time. That should be more of a color that people add in. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to sustain a concert tour. You're not going to be able to do all of these things that you want to as an artist if your only option is to do it really strained. But figure out how to do both. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.